In this video, we are going to take a look at the element nitrogen. It is one of the most important elements for life, at least as we know it. Our body contains about 3.2% of nitrogen in the form of nucleic acids, DNA, proteins and so on. Interestingly, statistically one-fourth of the nitrogen contained in our body at least once passed a Haber-Bosch reactor where it was converted to ammonia. Nitrogen is also an interesting element because it has a lot of oxidation states, meaning it can form a lot of different compounds. Furthermore, its compounds often have a big ambivalency. For example, ammonium nitrate can both be used as fertilizer and as an explosive. If we look at the chemistry of nitrogen, we can see that nitrogen atoms are connected via a triple bond. This bond is very stable and thus the nitrogen gas very inert and unreactive. Therefore, Extreme conditions are required to directly get nitrogen to react, these conditions include, extreme heat, radiation, the presence of a catalyst and high pressure. In the literature, Daniel Rutherford, the Scottish physician, chemist and botanist is most often attributed with the isolation and discovery of pure nitrogen in 1772, although nitrogen compounds have been known since ancient times. Let's take a look at how he did it. And before you ask, no. We are not going to replicate his experiments, at least not the first part. What he did was to take a glass flask with a wide mouth and a tight-fitting stopper. This flask was filled with regular air. He then introduced a mouse which he caught in the laboratory into the flask. After stoppering the flask, he waited for the mouse to die, as it consumed some of the oxygen in the flask. Next, he introduced a burning candle into the flask and waited until it went out. As this still did not remove all traces of oxygen, he burnt a few pieces of phosphorus in the flask. After this, the remaining gas in the flask was lead through a solution of soda lime in order to remove the carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide was already known to the time being. After removing the carbon dioxide, the remaining gas did not support combustion. Another mouse could not live in it but it gave no turbidity when tested with calcium hydroxide solution so Rutherford did recognize it as a new part of the air. If there were still mice in his lab after this experiments. Who knows? That's enough from the theory now. Let's see how to prepare nitrogen in the lab. Start by measuring out 25 grams of fresh mouse, caught in the laboratory. Ha 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 ha, don't worry, that was a joke. Instead, start by measuring out 1.38 grams of ammonium chloride. Next, weigh out 1.78 grams of sodium nitrite. Then, equip an Erlenmeyer flask with a stirred bar and a wide mouth funnel and place the flask on a hot plate. Add the sodium nitrite and the ammonium chloride to the flask, followed by 47 milliliters of distilled water. The exact amount of water is not critical, just make sure that both solids dissolve. Do not forget to turn on stirring. Then, grease the gas takeoff adapter with a small amount of lamp grease. Equip this adapter with a flexible tube which is connected to a glass tube on the other side. Secure the adapter with a cake clip. Now. Here's the apparatus that is used for capturing the nitrogen gas. The setup is called pneumatic through and can be used for any gas that is not highly soluble in water. It consists of a beaker, filled with water. Into this, place a water-filled measuring cylinder upside down, so that not much air bubbles are introduced. The gas, in our case nitrogen, is then bubbled through the water and into the cylinder, repressing the water. After the setup is complete, Turn on the heating and wait for the first bubbles to form at the glass tube in the beaker. We wait a few minutes before we start collecting the nitrogen gas in the cylinder, as the remaining air has to be first purged from the apparatus.
the gas production soon accelerates and we can see the mixture in the flask starting to reflux. Another minute or two into the reaction, the mixture starts to foam and bubble. We now pass the escaping gas into the cylinder by adjusting the position of the glass tube in the beaker. We continue to collect the gas until the cylinder is filled. After removing the cylinder from the beaker, we introduce a burning splint into it to prove that the gas does not support combustion. Let's see this again in the dark. To prove that the gas is not carbon dioxide, we add a small amount of calcium hydroxide to the cylinder, followed by some distilled water. After vigorously shaking the cylinder, the solution stays pretty clear indicating the absence of carbon dioxide. Now we have proved that the gas in the cylinder must be nitrogen or ignoble gas. If we would like to distinguish between nitrogen and ignoble gas, we could lower a burning piece of magnesium ribbon into the cylinder. In nitrogen, the magnesium would continue to burn, forming magnesium nitride. In a noble gas like argon, it would extinguish. Now, let's see how this method of producing nitrogen works. There are actually not many routes to synthesize it. By mixing the ammonium chloride and sodium nitrite, ammonium nitrite as an intermediate forms. This is highly unstable as the ammonium ion is a strong reducing agent and the nitrite ion is a strong oxidizing agent. So the ammonium nitrite decomposes into nitrogen and water. Because of Lee Chatelier's principle, the reaction is driven forward by the loss of one product from one side, nitrogen in this case. You might be wondering why it is necessary to produce nitrogen in the lab. After all, nitrogen is the most abundant gas in the air. Even schools tend to have a cylinder of nitrogen for the chemistry class. The answer is that nitrogen synthesized by this method is highly pure. The nitrogen from a gas cylinder always contains some oxygen, carbon dioxide and noble gases. This is not the case with the synthesized nitrogen. Still pure nitrogen can be produced by the decomposition of alkali metal azides. For the home chemist. This method to obtain pure nitrogen gas is way cheaper and safer than to buy a gas cylinder. For example, the nitrogen gas can be used for inert atmosphere distillation. If you want to use the nitrogen as an inert gas, you should first bubble it through water and then dry it by passing it through a drying tube filled with soda lime. The U-tube could also be used. You can even improvise the drying tube from a test tube by cutting open the bottom part. Alternatively, simply bubble the nitrogen through concentrated sulfuric acid. 